It's the Solid Signal Podcast. The day is September 23rd, 2019, as I record this. And that means that last night, the Emmys were on. I watched. I hope you did, too. And I have to say, uh, first of all, congratulations to uh, HBO and the programming that won. It was Game of Thrones and Succession. Uh, both won. And uh, I can't say enough about the hardworking folks uh, at AT&T who put this kind of programming together. Uh, congratulations to them. They truly do deserve it. But for me, uh, the big story was that I saw of the major categories that were announced, I think only two awards went to traditional broadcast networks. Contrast that with, uh, let's just say, 25 years ago, 100% of the awards would have gone to broadcast networks. It's been a long kind of road there. And at first, it was, you know, basic cable channels and, and premium channels like HBO. And now, of course, it's streaming channels like Netflix and Amazon Prime that are getting a lot of that attention. It makes me wonder, is it possible? Is it possible for uh, traditional television networks to get back some of that premium uh, spotlight that they once did? I understand that, you know, it's an uphill battle for a couple of reasons. It's an uphill battle because uh, traditional broadcast television still suffers from that lowest common denominator mindset, not just in people's minds, but honestly, a lot of the stuff that comes out on broadcast television is very low quality. Uh, it's lowest common denominator thrown out kind of stuff, but that doesn't seem to stop Netflix. I think if you look at Netflix, uh, there's a huge amount of content on Netflix that is not awards worthy, and yet when they do something good, they get the praise for it. So looking at the broadcast networks, I don't think it's the fact that some of their content isn't that good. Um, another reason that people say, oh, well, you know, broadcast television can't be that good is because you can't show nudity, you can't show violence, uh, because there are standards for broadcast television. And you know, not only do the networks choose to adhere to them, they have to adhere to them. It's kind of federal standards that they have to adhere to. But some of the best TV, uh, the award-winning TV, doesn't necessarily have to have uh, nudity or violence on it. It doesn't have to necessarily be something that couldn't be done on broadcast television. No, I think that honestly at this point, I think broadcasters, I, I hate to say it, they don't want to produce premium television. I think that they have tried in the past, but by and large, broadcasters are happy with the position that they're in because premium television, which is very expensive to produce, wins awards, but doesn't necessarily grab advertisers. Advertiser-supported television is always going to be a little less controversial because it's hard to get advertisers on board with something that's really controversial. I understand that. And I think that broadcast television, being advertiser-supported, is going to always be a little bit safer. It's going to be a little bit more mainstream. And the fact is, everybody is happy about that. I guess in today's broadcast landscape, there's room for everybody to kind of do what they think is best, do what they're really good at, and instead you know, of in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, when the broadcast networks had to try to be everything. So, okay, if they can't pull off, you know, multi-million dollar productions and really high value stuff and stuff with extreme social messages, well, so be it. It's just a little bit of a shame. I think anybody who grew up loving the broadcast networks is a little disappointed that they didn't get recognized really for a whole lot this year. And as I said, whether intentional or unintentional. Now, as to the show itself, um... They were calling this a no-host format, and I got to say, I, I think it kind of flopped. The first five or ten minutes were really not good. They did an animated piece with Homer Simpson and some sort of long, drawn-out thing with Anthony Anderson, and I don't know. It didn't, didn't really work out. It didn't really gel. And considering that these shows almost always run late and don't have time for the kind of uh, material that they write for later in the night... They should have just skipped this piece. If they were truly going to do a no-host format, they should have just started announcing awards right away and not done this kind of funny business that they did at the beginning. But then again, uh, Fox is trying to really regain that point of view as a, of being like an iconoclastic 
uh, network, you know, the, what they had in the 80s and early 90s, where they were really breaking the mold and doing things that nobody else was doing. And instead of having professional announcers, they had guys like Thomas Lennon who were making stuff up as they went along. I mean, it was fine. I suspect that when the ratings come in, it's going to be a very low rated show. Uh, and and perhaps it should have been. And, and that's OK. We are overwhelmed these days with uh, award shows. There are just so darn many of them. So what are you going to do? Uh, even a show like the Emmys isn't going to necessarily be a winner every year. I couldn't help feeling that the surprise winner of the night, by the way, was a little show called Fleabag, which is on Prime Video. And I'm not necessarily about uh, promoting streaming programming or unless it tends to be on one of our sister networks like HBO or uh, you know TNT or, or something like that. But I do think that Fleabag was very well made, and for a show that was not political, that was not terribly soap opera-y, that wasn't a huge message kind of show, I, honestly, I, I did think it was pretty good, and uh, it really kind of set expectations for what uh, Prime Video is capable of. Um, I, I gotta say, it's, um, it's nice to see some original stuff coming from Prime Video, it is a repository for a lot of stuff that is not very good. But on the other hand, it's not something that you pay for separately. Uh, you pay less for all of Prime, I guess, than you do for uh, even just Netflix all by itself. So you shouldn't have to expect that there's going to be this huge influx of quality programming. And here they came out with something that is really quite good. I guess uh, it just shows, and, and this goes back to the broadcast side of it, that you know, good programming can come from anywhere. If good programming can come from Prime, then why can't good programming come from the broadcast networks? There were some things about Fleabag that wouldn't have made it really suitable for the broadcast networks, but the real core of it, the real discussions that were taking place, uh, might have found their way there. I think that you could do stuff that was at least that well-written, at least that innovative if you wanted to, uh, I enjoy game shows as much as anybody else and cute situation comedies, and, and there's a place for that stuff. As I said before, uh, maybe that's where the networks need to be right now. It just makes me sad that they can't be a little more than that. That's about it for the podcast for this week. Uh, we'll be back next week with a whole new podcast full of interesting stuff. Thank you, as always, for listening. And while I have a little moment to mention it, uh, shop at SolidSignal.com, the folks who pay for this podcast, and um, you'll find everything that you want there. It is an awesome place to go. That's about it. Have a great week.